left, right. Yo, what is up, podcast listener? This is an episode about the future. We're going to have a couple subsequent episodes about the future. I would love for you to join the conversation. Let me know in the comments. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me an email, text, whatever you got. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are for the future. We're kind of talking about five-year increments and then 25-year increments, which is a stretch, but I think it's a feasible uh, timeline to discuss. And then a 50-year increment, because a lot of us who are listening will be alive in 50 years. And if you think 50 years back, everything we have around us right now did not exist and was almost inconceivable. So uh, give this one a listen. Let me know, and uh, I will see you on the other side. And as always, thank you so much. I truly mean that for joining. See you guys later. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. Cheers. 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 wonderful guys we are live this is episode 94 of sip talk podcast my name is justin de julio out of new york city uh now new jersey i'm joined by david boswell the political scientist and james the bosnator boswell uh, my bad david is in sacramento california james the bosnator boswell a man of many titles out of charleston south carolina philosopher, accountant, professional referee, and bartender. Uh, we got a cool topic, guys. I'm actually super excited about this one. Uh, we're going to be talking about what the future holds, some predictions for the future. Um, there's a lot to squeeze into one podcast, but we're going anywhere from uh, self-driving cars to uh, I railway. I the topic was going to be how to buy a properly fitting shirt. Dude, I... I, I <laughs> I'm taking, yeah, damn man. So look, that, that, that I, might be in 2030. <laughs> first off, first off, it's like cold, but it's not cold down here. And I got a ton of shit to move. So I'm wearing some workout clothes because I got a, we got a delivery today. It's a giant dresser and they put it in front of the freaking garage. I come in, I got like sunglasses dangling off my, my shirt. I'm wearing like French cuff shirt. I had to change. Because like, like, the shirt that you're wearing right now looks like it would fit really well it, with like hot pants in in a bar with a with a greek name that's uh, i mean that's pretty much literally why i bought it because it's a goofiest looking shirt i actually that's my bad i, I realize it looks a little goofy um but either way i'm moving shit i'm moving boxes in a new place in jersey uh big big weekend we got people coming to refinish the floors uh a little plumbing work i got to do tomorrow some sheet rocking um so so that's what's up but either way i'm in the middle of a construction zone all the time so sleeves only matter one fifth of the amount as normal. So if you're watching this, you can see my one fifth sleeved hoodie sweatshirt. It's really that's, embarrassing. That's did it come that way? Yes, it came this way. And, and, and did, you know, did, you, did you spend money on it? Yeah, I think I got it on like uh, Amazon with just a bunch of workout clothes. It was probably like really cheap made in China type stuff. I would hope so. Well, that'd be the only reason I would buy clothes from Amazon. Got some nice undershirts from Amazon. Very comfortable. All cotton. Uh, but look, so we're, we're going to get into the future thing. We're going to talk about uh, what the future holds. I put a uh, little teaser questionnaire on Instagram, what the future holds in five years, what people's speculation is for that, and then uh, 25 years and 50 years. And I really feel like five years seems really... So when we start talking about what's happened over the last couple of decades, David, you're going to... You got something to add on that. But what's happened over the last couple of decades a lot has happened in the last five or so years so and that you wouldn't maybe not have seen coming especially with coronavirus because things can change very fast so i got five years out then i got 25 years out which i think is you know we can make some pretty it's interesting really far. pretty interesting predictions at 25 but then 50 which i think l l the three of us statistically are very likely to be alive in 50 years not if I'm, I have anything to say about it. I mean, <laughs> it depends on my liver, but uh, but we're likely in to be 50 years. They'll have new liver technology. Well, I, you know, I hope so. Thank God, 50, 
but 50 <laughs> is an insane amount of time because think what 50 years ago was right that was 1970 the uh, what we have today was not even imaginable so i'm um, sure think, they're aware of the same hoodies uh maybe it's very possible um so there's some cool stuff that that it's worth speculating 50 years out uh that we got going on uh to talk about tonight so do david do you want to lead with uh with your quote there or you yeah want me let's to- lead with that because okay. that actually um is almost exactly 25 years ago today uh this is from christopher stoll he was on an npr station and he was talking with them about uh about the internet so this is a quote from him uh the internet it, it's a place for people to post both useful information and vicious nasty messages and they exist side by side. As a result, I expect the value of the internet for communications in general isn't very high. I don't think it will ever replace face-to-face meetings and real rallies, things that get commitment and involvement from people. Rather, it induces a very shallow, ethereal, and ephemeral involvement, and as such, I think it's grossly overpromoted, and there's a great deal of hyperbole surrounding it. The interviewer says- Can I pause you there? Yes. I think he was abs- I I think- He's absolutely right on every single one of the things he says there. What do you mean? You think he's right on everything that he says? He's right about how it, 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 there's useful information and then there's garbage and it's not going to replace face-to-face meetings and it cheapens interactions. And I, we'll, we'll I think see you where have a hard time wrong. squaring. I think you have a hard time squaring quote. I expect the value of the internet for communications in general isn't very high. Yeah, no, that's I mean, that. That's where he's wrong for sure. It te- but, depends okay, on how other your points are, are dead on. Depends Absolutely. on how you're you're qualifying what he's saying, though. The internet has replaced a lot of face to face meetings. A lot of them now, yeah, especially it's right now. Them, and and also, it's, and people recognize that it's not a good substitute. But, yes. but that's why I said it depends on how you're qualifying what he's saying. And I and think that's why he's I, saying that's, it really for face value. That, that's why I wanted to open with, or I wanted to share this quote earlier because it really stuck out to me. So the interviewer says so. You think like Newsweek magazine now has a page called the virtual page or something like that. And many newspapers as well have a separate section devoted to technology and exchanging information on the Internet. You think it's really not that important? Stoll. I'd say it's not that important. I think it's grossly oversold. And within two to three years, people will shrug and say, "Uh, yeah, uh, I was a fan of the early 90s. And now, oh, yeah, it still exists. But hey, I've got life to leave and work to do. I don't have time to waste online. (laughs) <laughs> or I'll collect my email, I'll read it, and why should I bother prowling around the World Wide Web or reading the Usenet simply because there's so little of value there? Interviewer. Well, Clifford Stoll, there's got to be something of value. I know that we use it quite a bit for research here in our newsroom. Stoll. Last line. Really? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, I mean, when was the last time? I'm thinking about subscribing to a newspaper, even just like a Sunday paper, one for the novelty of it. But two, there's a lot of great uses I could have for newspaper, like lighting fires or wrapping glasses and, you know, you run out of toilet paper, shipping products on eBay. But literally, I want to use it as like something to burn or, you know, wrap things up in. And and the novel better for starting a charcoal chimney. I don't know how to do it with other paper. You have to like spray it with a little bit of oil. So. But I think that's a really good point is somebody back in 95 saying 95, right? Yep. Saying that the Internet's going to be a fad. And a lot of people said that. But if I think if there's anything that has a small amount of good that enough people are have exposure to, it's the goodness of it's going to be exploited and it's going to continue to spread. Uh, I want to read through some of the comments that we got on Instagram because I know some of the people went out of their way to make these. We'll see what what values there. Uh, while I'm pulling this up, what are you guys drinking? I'll leave. Uh, tonight I've got this is from Trader Joe's actually. It's a Kentucky Best four year bourbon. Comes in a pretty pretty attractive bottle of cork. Yeah. Nice you need to glass. drink that you along with repurpose. Milwaukee's best beer. Kentucky's best whiskey and Milwaukee's best beer. James, what what are you drinking down there? Bush They'll ice duke it out. And, and boxed wine. Nice. Which nice. states do those represent? And is it their best? Uh no and no. All right. So look, so I got I got this post I put out the other day uh, asking people when they're at a restaurant or a bar, would they rather order from a waiter or on an iPad? And uh, I got 83 votes on waiter 
and 12, a surprising 12 that they'd rather communicate with an iPad. And so is this for a sit down restaurant? Uh, I put, I put restaurant slash bar. So that's going to be assuming a sit down restaurant. Cause I'll tell you at the, like, if I go into like a taco bell or something, being able to just like know. tap in my order instead of having to talk to somebody. I like that. No, I Screw that. Like dude, dude on the app, you can order it ahead of time. By the time I walk across Capitol park, I walk in. Usually it's about 30 seconds to get my food and I walk out. You know, my stance on apps. All right, here we go. Here we go. To the next one. Um, all right. Then I had another. So back in, uh, 85, I think, uh, was the year that back to the future came out and there was a movie campaign. It may have been back to the future Two that came out a few years later, but he had the hoverboard in back to the future Two, where he goes into the future and they have hoverboards instead of skateboards. So there's a campaign for the movie where they said the government has been hiding hoverboard technology it exists they're hiding it they're using it only for military use something along those lines so millions of people believe that hoverboard technology is real so i put a i put a post out saying hoverboard technology has been around for decades the government's been hiding it to discourage kids from dangerously skateboarding true or false and we got uh 68 percent true 32 percent false so for those of you guys who believe that's true the majority of you uh, well, there I is looked, there is hoverboard technology today. It's an actual product you can buy that just doesn't actually hover. It doesn't actually hover. Exactly. It, lo- it looks like it hovers. Um, all right. So SIP Talk tonight, we're talking about the future. What do you think will be different in uh, five years? Uh, flying cars. We got uh, good and positivity. Uh, everything may be voice or facial recognition. I do think. No Finger, fingerprint or facial recognition is is going to become even household appliances. I was looking at a lock that was a fingerprint lock. Those are uh, so easily defeatable. Sure, but the general public, you know, you, you're selling to the general public. So, um, more technology, less socializing, really sad, and then death. That's that's a shame. Well, I mean, on a long enough timeline. Uh, yeah, I, I I only posted this a little while ago, so. It looks um, like we, we, I'm going to make one prediction for the next five years. I'm going to say in the United States, the pots will be legal. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, uh, um, I don't think there's any turning away from that. Um, so look, I got a, I got five a, slew, years. Yeah, I got yeah. a slew think here. Think about how much progress has made in the last five years. Well, I mean, Still it's legal in New York apps. and New Jersey now, right? It's legal in like 17 states. Yeah, you're still about eight eight Republican senators short. Well, I I I think it's coming because as more states get away with it, and and they just continue to exist, and there's no big uproar against it. The other, you know, there's going to be. Remember, the loudest people, while they still may be the minority, are the ones that that make things happen. So I think you have a lot more loud people who want it than people who are defending it. And, uh, you know, in the, and, and election year, you know, th- there will be elections over the next five years. So Yes, I, I stand by the problem of you still have about eight Republican senators who have said that they refuse to ever vote yes on it. So unless they all get voted out, which they won't, you're, well, you still have a numbers problem. Well, what did Lindsey also, Graham say? What did Lindsey Graham say about Trump or something like that or about the Supreme Court justice? It doesn't matter what 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 a senator or. No, but that's when they're being hypocritical. This is to their bread and butter. There's a huge difference between those that doesn't follow. Uh, James, here's a question, though. If they were to legalize it federally, what about states that will never legalize on their own North Dakota, South Dakota, which I mean, honestly, they, they might because it's crops, South Carolina is going to be one of the last. Sure, yeah, but Let's you're go going to have Carolina. your hardcore uh, Republican states that are surrounded by states Missouri. that are illegal. That's not my question. My question is, would they be able to, on a state level, keep it illegal? Yes. Okay. All right. I so didn't know look. if federal could preempt there. Um, mm, no, it's because it's still federally illegal. So that's why there's now I'm saying if it were yeah. federally legal. It, yeah, so I'm pretty sure could, the, the can state have can still 
because it's yeah. not like the only thing that it would be is if there was a constitutional issue where the states <laughs> are and i don't see how the state's making some some form of substance illegal while it's legal. No, yeah because utah issue. utah had crazy laws on alcohol regulation so yeah they, yeah. they get to yeah, and, and exactly so i i think it'd be similar to that all right guys so i got a whole bunch of topics i want to cover like i said i don't know if we're gonna have time Anywhere from flying cars, life in different planets, sex in the future, cool stuff. So question for you guys. Um, I think there's a very high probability of life on either Mars or the moon in the next 20 years. I don't, I don't mean like a lot of life, but I mean, I'm thinking we're going to have some, uh, some, you know, small civilizations that are up there or uh, civilizations is the word I'm looking for, but communities that are up there. Uh, some ultra wealthy people and they're going to find some way to start colonizing these planets. Well, I, I, I know there's absolutely won't be at, it won't be the ultra wealthy that are doing it. No, it'll be an absolutely barren, difficult, miserable life. Well, who, going who's, to who's Mars, going to go going to, Mars to colonize. Right now, it's going to be people who are super dedicated to know that they're going to die there. Yeah. It's a suicide mission, but, but some ultra wealthy people I think would be cool with that. I think they're, they might go for a weekend, but a weekend is gonna, three years. You're not going to, you can get back from the moon pretty easily. Like getting back from the Mars isn't happening with our current technology. Well, and, and, you know, my, my, the question that came to mind when I was, I was thinking about this was why are we looking at Mars over the moon? The moon's bigger. closer. Mars is way bigger and it has the capability of being terraformed. It once held water on it. And the idea is that if we were to induce man, man-made climate change on Mars and we could get it to be able to warm up and eventually have liquid water on its surface, um, the, the moon's low gravity is a problem because it, the moon doesn't have the capability of holding an atmosphere. Well, that's the, the gravity was really what I, what I was thinking. The gravity, it, there's a lot of implications of the gravity. Plus... Mars, the gravity is uh, close Point. to Earth. 0.7, 0.8, I think. Okay, I yeah, but was... that's way better than like 0.16. Exactly. And yeah. that's the issue with the moon is that you don't have much gravity. It's going to feel very much more like a different world. And you see well, astronauts hopping around. It's also around. Like, like having an atmosphere, even if it's not a breathable atmosphere, an atmosphere still performs a lot of other really important functions. Um, one is going to be some form of a greenhouse effect and two is going to be some modicum of radiation shielding. And that's going to be if, for the people who go to colonize Mars, if they don't die from like lack of resources, like being able to get food and water and air, um, if that's taken care of the people on Mars are going to die from aggressive forms of cancer. Yeah, that's no, I'm serious. It's well, because... no. Unless it's unless they're bu- un- unless they're building something into d- deflect or absorb this radiation. Well, the, the idea would be to mitigate the radiation. Basically, Martian colonies would be almost entirely underground. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that, too. Uh, um, the moon, the, the moon serves a different role. If we're going to look at colonizing the solar system, the moon is an excellent place to have a base where you launch stuff from earth because the gravity well on earth is a lot harder to get out of than the moon. Mm -hmm. So you have the moon is basically your staging area where you launch to other places in the solar system because it's so much easier to get off of the moon. So, and the moon also has a pretty high amount of hydrogen and oxygen in the crust. So you can mine the moon for the two most important ingredients for our current technologies, rocket fuel. Which, was, which is liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So you already have all the ingredients on the moon ready for you for, for rocket fuel. And it's way easier to both land and take off from the moon. So the moon would have like something of a permanent colony, but it would be like a service base for jumping off points elsewhere. Whereas the idea with Mars is to make Mars a livable planet where you don't need to be constantly shipping in resources to keep it going. Now that's way down the line, but those well, are the ideas. Yeah. And, and my, one of the things that I'm thinking about, about live, when you live in a planet where there's less gravity, you lose your muscle mass and, when, yeah, and bone density. And when you return 
to a planet that has higher amount of gravity, life just becomes really hard, which is one of the reasons, one of the several reasons why astronauts can't stay in space for very long because they don't have that, that amount of gravity. Even though they're exercising like pretty much all day long. Yeah. A very good show that deals with the, the physics of that on Amazon, the expanse of anyone's interested. It's hundreds of years in the future where we've colonized Mars. We have people that are always out in the outer belt uh, mining that grew up on the space stations. So they're completely lanky, cannot stand a day in Earth gravity. Which is interesting. I, stuff. I, yeah, I have, to, I have to check that out. But you also brought up the other futuristic show that's on, what is it, Netflix or Prime? David? Which one did I bring up? Yeah. Uh, um, ah, Altered Carbon. So that gets yeah. into talking about bioengineering and physical enhancements and how is that the, the ethics of it and how do you equitably distribute that so it's not only the super rich that get to have this basically immunity. To or just they, permanent they, advantage. But but they yeah. but th- when they marketed uh, it's Altered Carbon, is that what it's called? Yep. Altered I, Carbon. I, I think it's I think I watched the whole series. There's a, how many seasons is there? Two? Two. Two. Yeah, I, I think I've seen the whole thing. But um, but when they marketed that originally, they're marketing, they marketed it like that's achievable now. And to get people interested in what they're doing in the show, they marketed it as if it's like a real current technology. Uh, I'll have to share. We're not that far off, really. Well, with this Elon Musk. So so th- that's that's what I want to get into is tech integrated with biology. Because right now, there's not one tech is not at any point inside of you unless you talk about headphones. Pacemaker. Pay, okay, yeah, pacemaker. That's a that's a very good one. But I think we're gonna get to a point where the tech is not wearable. So I went to Best Buy last night and I put on these Bose sunglasses. Audio was great, very comfortable to wear. Um, but again, that's external. So I think it seems really stupid. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one step better. Actually, I think it's one step worse than headphones because now to listen to music, you also must be wearing sunglasses. So if you go that's, inside, that, that's my point. Yeah, if you go inside. But here's my thinking is we're going to change very soon to tech that is like these sunglasses or headphones to tech or that is hearing more, aids to tech that is more like jewelry, like a hearing aid. Um, well, people already jewel- have those jewelry, like a watch or a ring or a necklace. <laughs> You can you can wear already twenty four seven. You're not bothered by it. So I think more tech is going to get to that wearable, regular level, like glasses. The NBA, the NBA. So how they did their bubble um, throughout the end of the season championships. All the players had a ring, and if they it had a little GPS, or I guess it was Bluetooth. So if they came in contact with someone who later tested, it showed all the contacts, every other ring that it hooked up with, within being within six feet. So if I was within six feet of you on the other team at some point and you tested positive, I'd have to sit out because I was within six feet of you and the rings went. Wow. That's, that's, that's heavy, man. That's, yeah. That was that's the NBA. Cool. And it was the NBA and it was voluntary because that was the only way they're going to be able to play the season. When the guy went back to see his family and stopped at the strip club on the way back, his entire team was pissed because he had to sit out for two weeks. They were also yeah. pissed because they didn't go to the strip club either. Also. Yes. But they all consented to that. There's a big issue when there isn't. And some players said, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to spend six weeks, two months in a bubble to play this game. And they said, nope, I'm not doing it. And they sat out for the season. And they and also didn't okay get too. paid. Yeah. Well, that was their choice. Uh, they, they play a game for a profession. I don't have a lot of sympathy if you're going to – about your wearing a ring to go play a game in a bubble for two months. Here's here's where I have sympathy for them is they signed a contract and now they're asking to be doing something outside of their contract. Their, yeah, their original contract. But again, right. But like you can argue about how much they're being paid and everything like that. But when they signed the contract, it was under the assumption that I get to live at home and do my own thing. I come and I do my practice. I play the games or whatever. And I get to go back home to my wife or whoever and now the NBA changes the deal but on that's, them. I mean, that's how lots of shit works. Every right, business now sure, is. That's why you, you know. Have a actually, you actually know. I'm actually. I bet the NBA has written into all but, those as the players' look, agreement that hold up, they get don't to change it up at what? Hear, hear me like out. Hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. You're saying it sucks for them because they're being kept from their family. But what about all these companies where people are working 
that now they actually can't come to work. So now they have to stay at home with their family. And now people are getting more divorces. So it, that's just life. Like everybody else had to, had to alter their life. <laughs> yeah. You know? the- and I get it. it <laughs> you know, we're kind of arguing opposites, but there are some, some similarities with that. It is what it is. And it sucks. That's that's, and you know, it, it sucks. Well, hold um, on. Like if you, when, when you worked as a, like, well, as an independent contractor or as a boss or anything, but when you've worked for a W2 where you just go in, like you don't sign a contract for most jobs that have no. specific things that you do and don't do. There might be an employee handbook, but there's not like contractual stipulations. Sure. But this is unprecedented times. And most yeah, but of it's different. You can't compare like attorneys. office workers to NBA players who sign a contract where the contracts are really specific about everything that they can and can't do. But I think there's a well, lot. I'm sure the contract says if you don't play in the games, then you don't get paid. Well, no, I would I would actually argue I, and I, I see a lot of employment contracts, especially for people that make a lot of money. And those contracts can be, you know, handbooks of a contract. And especially the more money they're making, these things are there's NDAs and things get really, really deep in these contracts. So, you know, with high paid position, it's not like you're working at Burger King and you know, they're like, here's your contract and it's you know, this franchise corporate handbook and everybody signs it and it's blanket stuff. High, high paid positions come with intensive contracts and you don't get, you know, bonuses and you don't get severance and stuff if you fuck up the contract. So, I get, you know, MBA is like a lot of other high paying jobs. Um, look, I want to get to the next thing here is brain implants because we were talking about the Neuralink, Elon Musk. Uh, my... Uh, my only thinking is like the oxidation thing and also like who's volunteering, who's going to be the first two dozen people to uh, volunteer. Oxidization is a silly thing to worry about. We've had titanium implants and knee implants. Yeah. There's plenty of metals that decades. don't corrode. But do, how do they conduct electricity? I, I'm asking. I don't gold, know. Doesn't doesn't, gold, gold doesn't corrode and gold is one of the best conductors. Okay. And that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. Is everything going to be made mostly out of gold? Um, but obviously plenty of other very... metals similar to gold. The point is that there are metals that conduct electricity very well that don't corrode. All right. So these things are in your, in your brain. You guys care to share any more of the details, David, one of you guys was talking about the chimpanzee. Well, it's just very, I mean, it's really pretty impressive. They put a chip into the chimpanzee and, uh, it's, you, you just see the video of it watching a TV and it's very basic pong but it's controlling it with its mind. It doesn't have a controller in its hands. It is doing it. One, I mean, chimps are very smart. They can be taught how to play Pong. I bet they're sort of losers. trained to act. Uh, he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you think Casey flinks when he loses. Uh, but no, he's doing it strictly through mind control, which so is that's pretty that's impressive wild. technology. So here's, here's what yeah. I was thinking this afternoon is that when you're looking at tech, you're looking at enhancing your five senses. So you got um, taste, you know, maybe in the future, they can have some flavor that doesn't better flavors that don't have calories, some way to help satiate you without taking the calories and give you real flavors. Um, Hearing, obviously, we have hearing aids, you have headphones, there's easy ways to put stuff onto whatever bone is, is, is inside. I don't think that's a tough one to enhance sight. Um, I think sight is a really interesting one, but technology to enhance these different five senses. Um, I, I think it's less it's about the five senses. I, I, I could see hearing and sight being enhanced, but I think it would be more about resilience to disease, physical strength and intelligence. Well, well, hang on, hear me, hear me yeah. out on this five, five sense thing. Um, uh, because when I think of technology, I think about, and, and implants, I think about enhancing the five senses. Do you but, want your sense of smell to be enhanced? Maybe living in New York City. Maybe, but if you're in, <laughs> if your <you're, laughs> if your sense of smell is enhanced, you know, maybe I don't. But for a sommelier, they're going to want to enhance the hell out of their sense of smell. But what I'm getting at is the Neuralink isn't enhancing any one of those five senses directly. Yeah. It's actually linked to I don't know what part. I'm sure we could find out by just googling it. But it's linked to a certain part in your brain that's neither. There's none of the five senses. It's neither touch, smell, taste, hearing, or sight. So I think that's really interesting 
that I would, you know, if we only had a conversation, we hadn't heard about the Neuralink thing about how technology can, you know, how it's going to be attached to you. I think we would hit those five senses. I don't think we would be going in that Neuralink direction with the conversation. Um, so, but James, you were talking about some enhancements. I, I, I just, well, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think more genetically, like if you can figure out some of the genetic markers that lead to higher intelligence they so the, the the technology called crispr where you can kind of directly edit genomes if you can start to yeah if you can start to figure out how to edit genomes to to select for intelligence then you could have people that when they get pregnant or maybe like have, have probably artificial insemination where you take the egg out of the woman and then you modify its genome you take the sperm you modify its genome so that way when they meet it's already going to be selected for intelligence. And then you could probably do the same thing for strength or other physical features, be it hair color, eye color, skin color, all these things that if you had enough money, the technology is not that far away. And part of the reason why we don't have the technology right now is basically ethical, um, ethic, ethical safeguards that are preventing research into it. But at some mm -hmm. point, those ethical safeguards are going to break down. Um, well, they have. You already had the case in China where the doctor um, CRISPRed two twins to uh, inoculate them against the AIDS virus. Right. So and so, has... yeah, so that, that's my point is that that it's already broken down a little bit, but there's not much stopping it from going further. I and mean, so we have, then the we have rules and laws is basically what's stopping it. But people but, break rules and laws all the time. Right. So I think selecting for that in children and that's kind of where altered carbon comes in is just, well, if initially those kind of treatments are going to be extraordinarily expensive. And so you're going to have only the people that can most afford it that are going to be basically selecting for effectively superhuman babies, which is only going to make, it's just going to make inequality worse because you're going to have basically this second race of people that are all perfect. Yeah, and, and, it's, and um, it's stemming from people who already have access to wealth. <laughs> so yeah, and and eighty years ago there was a problem with that. What uh, What do you mean, David's laughing? That went over my head. <laughs> You're not Jewish. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Got got you. All right, so look, I want to I want to just touch on the five senses though uh, before we move on. Uh, in terms of how do you enhance? What are the technological enhancements to each of the senses? So I was thinking when it comes to like touch, for example, um, and this is primitive. This is like next five year kind of stuff. It's already James. Do you remember the gaming mouse that I had that had haptic feedback when you rolled yep. over something on the desktop and your computer? You yep, could, the Logitech. You, yeah, you could feel it. That was that was my favorite mouse I've ever had. And that was really cool. But I, I'm thinking where is about, it? It's in the garbage. Every uh, OS and every all the all these different software stop supporting it. So um, but, uh, uh, what I'm thinking is for like VR, the ability to kind of feel touch and, uh, you know, and get some type of haptic feedback that way. But I think there's, so I think one thing that people are doing right now is, um, is they'll be putting rare earth magnets in their fingertips. And that allows you to basically feel electric and magnetic fields with your hand. Mm. Wow. Um, it's some, yeah, look it up. Um, to, to Justin's point about a half bit feedback, if you've seen Ready Player One, really great movie that came out based on the book, uh, they get it's this virtual reality world where they have really, really expensive suits, but you feel everything, you can feel touch to the littlest bit of someone touching you in the virtual space. That's that's, a, that's basically what I was imagining, but I also feel like there's got to be a better way still than that i think that's still pretty primitive very achievable what, what they have in ready player one is pretty achievable in five to ten years what are you picturing then i i the, basically the ability to be in a chair right or in a relaxed position and feel as if you're getting up and you're running you know I don't, that sounds more like a brain chip implant where like you can where it's tricking your body into feeling that. I don't and know I, and how... I think I think that's exactly the way because you're not going to be able to if your muscles are moving and you're feeling the nerves 
and your muscles, your, your body's moving. So you have to hack the brain and the, and the nervous system to, to get in there. But I think when we're talking about Neuralink, that's where touch is going to go. I had an MRI last year. Weirdest feeling. Uh, I was uh, for, for my head. And so all the, it was directed there and I could feel it twitching down my arm because of just the immense magnetic fields that were being generated. It was triggering my nervous system. It was such a weird feeling, mm. that, that it, but that, it makes me think like, well, I don't think you really want to have like a huge, especially how loud they are, but like subjecting yourself to huge magnetic currents constantly uh, to like induce certain yeah. feelings. But MX, it's a concept. MX says enhancing sight would be cool. Having x-ray vision. Um, I want to comment on that because there's actually something you can do. You can actually have a surgery to be able to see in the ultraviolet. I think I, I heard about this. Because there's a filter on your retina that blocks out UV rays. Your, your um, cones can actually see UV, but the UV light gets blocked out by like a filter in the front of your eye. You can have that filter removed and then you can actually have like an enhanced spectrum that you can see. And yeah. And basically the way that light works is it's, um, is it's wavelength. So the wavelength for ultraviolet is what tighter, shorter. Mm -hmm. Ultraviolet are higher energy. So higher Mm -hmm. frequency. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, exactly. So it would be tighter effectively. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Instead uh, of. Yeah, because infrared is below red, and that's a lower frequency, lower yeah. energy. But also with contacts or glasses that are able to pick that up and then display it in something that is invisible light, uh, I think that's very achievable, very easily. X-ray vision, I think, is a little ways off because right now the way that X-rays work is X-rays are really high energy, way higher than ultraviolet, and. Um, Constant exposure to extra x-rays leads to bad things like cancer. Uh, have you guys seen this? I think it's on prime, this TV show with, uh, what's the woman that it's called like radioactive with, uh, Mary Curie. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and basically I, I started watching it, but I can't watch TV and movies and stuff like that. I'm busy doing other stuff. And then I just fell asleep when I started paying attention. Um, but it looked pretty cool and she was playing with radioactive stuff and then she got cancer her husband got cancer and and they're dead now um Uh, well i think you could kind of back into a less dangerous version of x-ray vision by finding a way of enhancing the spectrum that your eyes can pick up into the infrared because then you can just see heat and you you like infrared cameras can kind of do a cheap version of x-ray vision by being able to see heat signatures behind something that would otherwise be opaque that's true. That's true. Um, all right. So taste, how, do, how are we simulating taste and, and why, why is that something that we're going to look into moving forward? And like I said, for my thinking is like low calorie stuff, but also if you are in a VR world and you do something, you put something in your, you know, virtually in your mouth and now you can, I mean, if, if you are hacking the brain, I think that's a lot easier to achieve than by trying to hack or attach something to your tongue. Taste is always just going to be electrical signals. That's all. I mean, it's a nerve signal that comes from your tongue to your brain where it's processed. So there's no reason you can stimulate a taste in someone um, just by, by stimulating the nerves. Yeah. If yeah. you, if you send the electrical impulse to the right part of the brain in a precise enough manner, there's no reason why you couldn't force someone to taste pretty much anything, I suppose. Ooh, force them to I mean, taste. I, that I, sounds. That sounds like I, 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 I feel. I feel like Domino's Pizza is working. With this <laughs> I, I think they have a lot bigger problems going on, but I feel like I've heard reported that lightning strike victims taste metal. Least of their concerns at the moment, but yeah, huh. they feel it enough to bring it up. Yeah, that's that's weird. <laughs> this is going to be a problem down the road. <laughs> um, wow, that's wild. Well, I, hmm. I bet it fucks with your taste after that because you just get this, you know, giant pulse of electricity through you and your whole body is kind of run. There was one dude that got struck by lightning seven times in his life. (laughs) And then his grave got struck by lightning. Did it? (laughs) Yes. I'll find the picture. (laughs) Uh, If that's real, that'll be. But that's the the seven. The the, the dude being alive for seven uh, for seven lightning strikes is 100 percent real. 
Yeah, no, I I think I've heard of that. So that's we that's, told him to stop golfing during the thunderstorms after the second, but he was determined. Dude, after the first lightning strike, I'd be like, "Fuck, man!" It's like when you get in a car accident and then you just start driving really, really safe. Um, like some people can't drive after a bad accident. I wonder how often he went to church. <laughs> the thing about lightning strikes that people don't get is they can go like five miles laterally before they ever touch down so you can be sunny and dry where you are i mean even two miles even charleston perfect example two miles away sunny perfect don't even know there's a storm going on lightning can go over and come down and hit a clean field lightning is lightning is very cool uh not something we can really harness and do anything with other than just be careful and watch out for um all right and then so i got hearing i think hearing is a really easy one to hack because you got a lot of space on the side of your head and you can put, and you already have hearing on it. Yeah, exactly. It's just well, getting we have, more internal. We have even better because you do have, you have um, the intraoral implants where it is a, an implant into the brain that yeah. connects the outside via um, the receiver. Yeah. So I, so I think that transmits that's kind of that hard. and, and, and then stimulates the brain. We talked about sight a little bit, but I think so. Here's, here's my thinking on sight is that pretty soon we're i'm staring at my phone screen which is staring at the computer screen which is showing this camera that's on me it's showing me your guys images but i feel like screens are going to disappear very soon and if you have the right eyewear on whatever is projected onto that eyewear to appear distant at you know whatever resolution so you can make it out and i can have a screen over here that doesn't exist in real life and Do you remember it, Google Glass? Uh, I remember a lot of disinterest in attaching that to my face. And, but that's where the wearable, I'm thinking a lot of these wearables are going to, because they're uncomfortable. You well, know. that's my point. Is that Google Glass, like they had Google all these have. concept things and then like it actually debuted and it just cratered. Well, I mean, just kind of like those that I was like, these are the coolest thing ever. These bows uh sunglasses but it's only cool when you're like outside and it's sunny but any Justin, time... a, a second ago you said that the google glass was uncomfortable what did you mean by that i just meant having to wear glasses okay having i to, think it's having... uncomfortable for a completely different reason because whenever you're sitting across from someone wearing google glass you have no idea what the hell they're looking at or if they're videotaping you or recording yeah it's but that's weird. the exact but that's the exact same argument that people made against uh bluetooth headsets 10 years ago. Oh, somebody in the bank is like talking to themselves. They're such a weirdo. What a fucking retard. I can't they look like they're just crazy. Look like they're schizophrenic. Yeah. No, go, that's, go to the completely, fucking, that's no, a completely not, different thing than what I'm saying. Yes, it is. Because I'm talking about someone else being a jackass. I'm not talking about someone else recording me. Are you talking about that's recording or are you talking about them? Yeah, Google like Glass, you could take a video. Huge no, I get that. I get, I get that. I get that. Yeah, I thought I don't you like were talking idea. about them. Constantly. I that thought, was my point. I thought you were talking about being in like I'll also a, distracted, but more so the just the total lack of privacy. Ever. Right, well, we're, I I have I think we're really going in that direction. But what I w thought you were talking about is somebody being in a restaurant looking at you and like doing this, and they're not looking at you. And and well, that's that what, that's too. also that that's also an issue. Yeah. But, but yeah, somebody really? sitting down with somebody who's recording you all the time is weird as fuck. And, and you I, wouldn't know it. Well, well, I mean, if they're uh, pre, you know, early, it? early versions, and you know, anybody who's got recording glasses on, if they if they look like real glasses, the recording is usually pretty low quality. Um, and and if it's decent quality, you can usually tell like this person's got some funky ass glasses on. We're not talking about current constraints. We're talking about a pair of glasses that we're saying you can record someone without them. No, just accept no, that as the premise. And just like police have have body cameras on them now. I definitely would not. I would feel I actually think I would I'd adapt to it very quickly. But I'm telling. Yeah, I, I get it that like somebody aiming a video camera at you like literally all the time, like just waking up next to somebody and she looks over and she's like recording you right, right off the bat. Like that. Justin, are you, are you a clumsy person, Justin? Not especially. All right. Just imagine you were. Do you want to really nice? Your <laughs> <laughs> and you're walking down the street and you don't see it, but you step in a huge pile of dog shit. You slip, you fall on your ass. Now it's on your beige suit and like eight people all took that video. So that you get home. 
and you see someone put together a little montage of this 360 degree view of Justin DiGiulio slipping on dog shit. And, oh, oh, and that's everybody that's, all the time. But that's all in my life. That's for the most part, everybody all the time already. When no, they're you, getting as, you picking yourself up after the dog shit, but you're not getting the play by play. You're not getting the yeah, job. But look, but, oh, and but, here you go. How many videos have you seen of the ring cam where the guy falls off the front steps? This stuff is slowly already happening. It is it's going. It's, not, it's going it's not everywhere. And but, he uploaded it himself. But I'm unless it's a delivery driver. No, yeah, then it's a delivery dead. driver or something like that. But I see people recording stuff all the time, every day in Manhattan, aiming their phones at shit. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's weird. Like I see some every once in a while, I see some homeless people doing some crazy wacko shit. And every once in a while, I'll try to like get a little picture. Because I'm like, no one will believe me that this happened. There's a crazy guy. His pants were down to his knees. He had underwear on under that. No shirt on the subway yesterday, waving around what looked to me to be between five and ten grand. Like if it was hundreds, it was it was ten grand. I didn't get to see the denomination of the bill, but it was a thick stack of money just waving it around, muttering and talking to himself. And I'm like, I got to get a picture of this shit. Um, but oh, but all right. so. Rosh just posted two things that are interesting. One is Lisa says, um, we have phones now where people can record you without you knowing. Well, so you can record audio pretty easily without people knowing because you can just keep it in your pocket and they won't even know. But it's really hard to take a video of somebody with your phone without them being like, what are you doing with your phone? Well, but he also that's... posted a link to a set of sunglasses, well, eyeglasses that look super clunky, but they take 720p HD video. Um, but and th- you can just wear them and they're 120 bucks. But that's my, my friend point. had them at a Christmas party. The higher. Yeah. That's and who's going to edit that fucking video. What a weirdo. But that's my and I, like, that's what I'm saying. Now I'm agreeing with you. Like one, somebody's got to edit it Two, It's weird for fucking every person that you talk to. Nobody wants to tell you anything, honestly, and everybody's putting on an act in front of you. I'm telling you that's going to go away. All right. Because people are just going to get used to it and we may not be cool with it, but guess wh- who's seeing it? Me seeing people take videos all the time is new for me. I'm like, fuck, that's weird. But guess what? The four-year-old that's walking down the block, seeing everybody doing it, by the time they're 15, 20, 25 years old, they're just, they're used to it. And they're used to being there's, on camera all the time. There's a really good series, again, on Netflix. This is a uh, Brazilian one. Uh, it's called Omniscient. And it's about a city where they put a little a wall around and everyone, when they're born, gets a little drone that follows them around and it has AI that determines if what they did is a crime. So it's a crime free city. There's like four robberies every year and really harsh punishments. But you can live outside the city and you don't have to have that and you can deal with all the crime and all that. And it's really interesting from a dystopian sense of the choices that you make for acting in public. There's a show in the Walden City. Guy has to come in, gets his drone. He's trying to hook up with this girl. He's like, no, I'm sorry. I can't do this. You can come see me outside the wall. I can't do this with something watching me the entire time. Well, but it's, it's, I have, uh, I want to, I want to talk in a minute about autonomous cars. I got tons of notes on this stuff. Super kind of utopian uh, vision and, and also dystopian. And actually, I want to get into some of the politics and stuff. Talk about Supreme Court, stuff like that. Um, I haven't even touched on the sex thing. We'll get there maybe in a future episode too, but I want to talk about the autonomous cars and we're at the three quarter mark. So I want to, uh, I want to kind of get us moving real quick guys, uh, autonomous cars. Um, I think we're going to see, so Apple's got an event where they're releasing something supposedly big. They're trying to build it up. Apple, since they released like iPhone and iPad, like it, even the people that love Apple, are really kind of disillusioned with their releases. So they're really pumping this one. I hear people talking about it. I don't usually hear people talking about the Apple product releases. So I feel like this could be some type of automotive uh, related release, but who knows? It could be the iPhone 16. Um, But self-driving cars, here's something that I, maybe I read this, right? I watched, I watched a bunch of videos today. I read some articles the self-driving cars right now are geared towards safety and the fear with self-driving cars is that you know if you get in an accident and you die you know it's because the algorithm decided to do that and you didn't make the move yourself but for the most part this whole movement towards self-driving cars is safety driven and at a certain point we're going to hit certain right now it's convenience driven i for the i don't don't think so I, I think I think the movement forward and I think the sell on it right off the bat 
is going to be safety. I think they will also try to sell you some convenience as well. But right now, how are they selling you the Audi that we have right now? Uh, has like lane assist and the it doesn't let me change lanes sometimes. And sometimes there's a car close to me in front, doesn't let me accelerate. It does all this stuff. It's not selling me that on convenience. It's selling me that it, it drives itself 30% of the time for safety reasons. So I think safety is going to be the leading. But And I think in five or six years when we might have some, maybe in some urban areas, some Ubers that are self-driven, that's going to be for safety. I don't, and, and, and then I think we get to convenience and where I'm going with this is then I think we get to experience. And well, I just think of the Tesla drivers that you have all the videos posted of them, like reading a book or in the passenger seat or taking a nap and you have people videotaping them from the highway. Like what the hell is this guy doing? That, that's why I bring up convenience. Yeah. And, but I think, again, I think that the convenience is going to be the luxury lipstick on the safety package. So I think that, you know, they're going to sell you this luxury of the convenience. That'll be the luxury, um, but it's going to be safety driven. But I think self-driving cars are going to get more experiential where you're able to do stuff in the cars. You're able to adjust the drive somehow. I, you know, again, I'm, I'm shooting in the dark here because I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, but I think we're going to see some crazy self-driving cars. And then again, with the age thing, I think our generation not going to be totally cool with self-driving cars, but I think a generation or two from now, like nobody's going to want to drive a car, like maybe for well, the novelty of it. Self-driving cars are also going to be limited. You said like different kind of drive styles. That's going to be limited by the infrastructure that we have, which in the United States really isn't that good. The 2.4 yeah. trillion is way less than would actually be needed to get our company country's infrastructure up to some european countries and have you ever seen any towns or cities construction projects where they're like yeah we we budgeted uh you know 780 million and we'll get it done in two years and five years down the line they're at like three billion <laughs> one point <laughs> It's, it's well, like, so two, two, 100% inflation was at, or increases. Yeah, two, or, two, you know, or even like toll booths. They're like, yeah, we're going to put up the toll booth. Nobody even thinks about this anymore. Most toll booths, are, you know, initially were put up to cover the cost of the pro project and they're supposed to be taken down. Now, anytime there's something new, toll booths are just there for good. Well, you know, part we, of it is like the, the toll booths are originally erected by the government and then private companies will come in and offer the government some large amount of money to take it over. And then the private companies will just run the toll booths and that's their revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but to your point about infrastructure overruns or whatever, this was probably about 20 years ago, the big dig where they, do they dug the tunnel in Boston. Um, mm -hmm. It was supposed to be, I think, a five-year project and $7 billion. And it was like a 12-year project and $21 billion. That's insane. But that's my point. Like this two trillion, whatever it is, I, I like for me, just the whole idea that we're even giving it a number and we're going to say what it's going to do is total garbage because either it's going to get half assed or it's going to cost way, way more. But you just you, you know, you have to you have to realize that that's not accurate information. We can uh, also just bomb a lot more brown people. Where do you spend the money? Where do you? <laughs> what <laughs> i'm just looking You're at historical joking. performance here for, you for the government i get it although they say we're pulling out of afghanistan pretty soon we'll see how that goes um so what i had a note on auto uh driverless cars and and also on CRISPR. but skeptics have slowed down the gmo game you're gonna have major skeptics slowing down things like CRISPR. And, and, and more for most people kind of day to day uh, driverless cars, you're going to have these skeptics that are scared and they don't, you know, people are scared of GMOs. They don't realize. Would you buy a driverless car? Um, I can tell you when I take the train, I get so much more done. Uh, and I like taking the train a lot of times. I don't like sitting in traffic, but I also do like driving. So uh, that wasn't the question. So but would you own, would you buy a self-driving car today? I think so. I think so. If, if, you know, if we were no, further no, along just, with the technology. But it's today. I just think you get the shit knocked out of you, especially in New York City, by the drivers there. I mean, 
Oh. I don't think they've tested any of the Waymo or Uber self-driving cars there because you can't. Good luck. You have to have Dude, a I, second I've, sense living. I've been, in, I've been driving. One time I was, I was driving the, uh, the first 911 I had, and I was downtown. I had three people in the car. We had the top off, I think. And this cab just pushed into the lane. I didn't know the mirror on the, so the mirrors you couldn't fold in and the mirror literally like folded up like this somehow just popped back into place. But I'm literally like smacking on the side of the guy's car and, and he's just continuing to move into me. And I mean, and the cab drivers in New York city are insane. The cabs are in such bad condition, having a nice car. When I bought the car that I got, I was like, this is, it's about as depreciated as it will get unless I put a gazillion miles on it, the value is not going to change much. And if I had a brand new car, a brand new Porsche, and it got bumped into or dinged or anything, I I'd, I'd cry like it was my baby. And if I had a classic Porsche that, you know, would cost just as much to get fixed, I would cry if somebody wouldn't really cry, but I would be very fucking upset. If somebody bumped into it. So, um, all right. Um, so there's a comment from Raj. Uh, he, he, maybe it's from Raj. He didn't tag anybody. <laughs> Self-driving so, cars should be sponsored by alcoholic beverages to assure your safety. That, <laughs> I support that. I think, yeah, I think having like bus service. Shout out to the comments for that one. I think that was Raj. Actually, maybe. Um, but Whatever uh, the comments are. All right. So look, we got, we got about five minutes left. Should we talk about health? Should we talk about employment? Should we talk about nature? Should we talk about the court? Should we talk about sex? Your guys call. Sex sells. Yeah. Yeah, but there's so much. <laughs> there's so much I got I got going on about. Oh, it. there's a really interesting thing that I've been hearing about um, where and they don't exactly know the reason why, but basically across the world, sperm counts are dropping in men to to the point where like we might actually start to have a population crisis in about 20 years. I have uh, another good movie, this. Children of Men. Yeah, the, that yeah, might actually movie. come to, to be a reality, which I fully support. But. Well, it, that could be not a bad thing because we have a, I mean, the population has increased so, so much in the last 100 well, years. Well, people don't, people even you know, evolutionarily, not that what's causing this is evolutionary, uh, is evolution, but we don't need to have as many offspring to sustain life because people live when more often now when they're born than they used to yeah, looking at you yeah. Mormons. <laughs> um, Catholics. I would like to have a word. <laughs> I think on average, the Mormons got them. I, I think so. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of super religious people uh, have lots of kids. What else do you have to do? Well, I got, I also religion is, they I can't mean, drink. We're gonna have. To, we're gonna have. You see, I would think that that would decrease the birth rate. We're gonna have to have another episode of this stuff. But oh let, boy, let, let me uh, let me get into sex. But I do. I want to touch on the the sperm count. They're saying uh, there's a really good chance that it has to do with plastics. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what they're believing to be the leading cause right now. But there's so many other, and it's it's basically, you know, if estrogen levels are affected lower testosterone and that every man right now is turning into a woman just in the sense of, you know, guys are losing masculinity and I don't know. It's, that's a weird topic for me to broach, but I, I feel like we're losing the differences between the sexes and it's not the, the needle's not pointed in the masculine direction these days. Goddamn you know, gay agenda. Well, no, I don't think, you know, and again, <laughs> This is a it's a difficult. That was a half-hearted refusal. Uh, yeah. No. Well, no, because I, I don't. <laughs> and think also, any, he's not realizing that I'm joking. I I know you're joking, but I'm trying to ex not. First of all, I know you're joking because I know you say shit just <laughs> for the sake of saying it. You have to realize the people that are listening don't know you the way that I know you. So, um, just keep that in mind. But but yeah, no, I I think kind of the pussification of culture is is what I'm leading on to. Um, there's a quickly there's a comment about japan how like single people will have like 3d sex tech and everything like that but on the topic of japan and their birth rate um right now japan sells more adult diapers than baby diapers yeah and that's yeah, they that's, actually have a population issue 
they have a decreasing population. And um, that was and a one very of the things, old population. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about with sex is that the numbers are skewing that people are having less and less sex. And mm-hmm. also, and just look how culture is right now. It's, and we've had episodes that we've focused on this, how I had a, I, I can't, I don't want to say that. I'll tell you guys after, but you know, I see some things sometimes in the office. I'm like, that's not exactly appropriate. And even though it, it isn't inappropriate, but it could be misconstrued. And I know the person that's making the offense and I know that's not what they were trying to do, but you know, I don't know where else that might go. I know in that moment it was all right, but effectively this person represents me and the company. So lines are definitely shifting. But people are afraid to do shit. People are afraid to ask people out. Um, face-to-face contact is way down. People aren't comfortable talking to each other. People don't want to ask somebody out on a date in person. Uh, you know, people barely talk on the phone now. So it's really, and also now that we're not seeing as much of each other, people aren't having uh, this regular contact and meeting new people. So having more sexual partners is becoming much more difficult uh, let's see. I'd agree with all of that. There's an article in the Atlantic. I just read an excerpt from it today. Everyone needs an excuse, but it was called the sex recession. Um, and she's talking about the, the results of fewer, uh, and less physical connections. Uh, also noted that the teen birth rate has decreased a lot. And obviously that's, well, that's protection. Good. It's due to protection and condoms, but it's also as a result of teens not having as much sex. Uh, and they, I guess they did some surveys and they're saying people are having sex at a later and later age. I feel Although, like Congress has been doing things to counteract that though. To make people have sex. At, oh, you're talking about Matt Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Were you talking about Matt Gates? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. All right, guys, we have so much more to talk about in terms of this kind of futuristic predictions. We'll save this for the next episode. If David can join that one, great. Otherwise, we'll definitely, you know, we'll hit it uh, next Thursday as well. But there's so much more future stuff. And like I said, I want to get into politics. Uh, We can circle back to some space travel, uh, unemployment, talk about the future of nature, coastline, species, Supreme Court, the internet. Like I got, I got a ton of stuff I want to talk about with you guys. And maybe and in 25 years, I'll have oceanfront property. Well, maybe shorter than that, man. I don't know. Are you on a hill right now? Uh, I'm higher than sea level. Not by much. Not by much. Exactly. Um, all right, guys, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you next time. We're wrapping episode 94. Talking about the future. In the future, we'll be talking more about the future. So hang tight for that next episode. Hey, Thank Max, you guys- thanks for the props. Uh, and thank you guys all for joining. Uh, last comment. Oh, you, you got that. James is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I've had like uh, three drinks at this point. <laughs> um, so, guys, don't forget to follow the audio podcast. If you're watching us live, follow the audio podcast. Follow us on YouTube and uh, send us your messages because we want to know what you guys want to hear about. Uh, on that note, adios. See you guys. Later. All right, that concludes the episode. Thank you for joining. Let me know what you thought. And again, we're going to do two more episodes, probably at least one more episode about the future. These episodes will be in the future. So before they happen, let me know what you want to hear about. Let me know your thoughts in the future, and I will see you guys next time. I like PBR. I just got priced out of it.